Fans coming your way, the holiday treat you've all been waiting for. You know Corny and Fuji, Albano and Dylan, Wizard and Heyman, and Hart and Creechman. But do you recall most famous manager of all? Bobby? Pretty boy Heenan was the greatest of all time. And if you ever saw him, you would marvel at his mind. Bruiser and old Crusher used to laugh and call him Weasel. They always said that Bobby was nothing but spoiled and evil night after night and town after town Bobby would bump and bleed he'd insult all the human noise ham and eggers you are indeed then all the fans would hate him and they paid to see him beat Pretty boy Bobby Heenan, you're the best in his story. We're going to talk about the WWA Indianapolis Christmas shows that started in 1964 and ran till 1981. Now there, there might have been other WWA Christmas shows after that. Uh, results are kind of sketchy. Uh, there is, there is a. Uh, a, a thought to be 1982 Christmas show that was in Hammond, Indiana, but there are no results for that show. So we're just covering from 1964 to 1981. Uh, some great shows. We're going to go over the results of these shows, uh, some notes, uh, and my opinions on some things. Uh, so if you are a a stats kind of person that likes the results, likes a lot of names, you're going to love this episode. And if not, uh, forgive us. It might be a little bit of a a rough ride for you today. Uh, thank you for joining us, though, like I said, and Merry Christmas. And let's jump right into it. As you know, the WWA was formed uh, by Dick the Bruiser and Wilbur Snyder in 1964. And in that same year, uh, on Christmas night, December 25th, they held their first Christmas uh, Spectacular show. Uh, and it was a, a very, very strong show. In the main event of the show, uh, Johnny Valentine and Wilbur Snyder, Snyder excuse me, <laughs> wrestled to a no decision. Uh, basically, it was a double count out. Uh, Snyder took the first fall. Valentine won the second. It says both wrestlers went over the rope onto the floor and they could not return to the ring. So basically, a double count out. It was a draw uh, for the U.S. title. That would have been a great match to see Valentine and Snyder. Both those guys, super tough and super talented. Uh, of course, Snyder, one of the best technical wrestlers, scientific wrestlers of all time. And Valentine, a very tough uh, brawler. Uh, you know, not afraid to make the guy know that he's in the ring with him. So that would have been a great, great match. Uh, some of the other results of that show, Boris and Nikolai Volkov, not that Nikolai Volkov, the original Nikolai Volkov. Uh, they defeated the Scuffling Hillbillies. Bobo Brazil beat Jack Wilson. Uh, Calvin Pullen defeated Roger Kirby, that is uh, soon to be the Prince Pullen. And Angelo Papo wrestled to a draw with Luis Montero. Uh that is the 1964 Christmas show held on Christmas nights uh, in the first year of the WWA operations. Uh, 1965 at the Fairgrounds Coliseum also held on Christmas night, which was a Saturday. Uh, in the main event of that show, Dick the Bruiser defeated Gene Kaniski to win the WWA Heavyweight Championship. Uh, it says the crowd is reported as being 5,200. Uh, and all these results, by the way, I did not mention this. I forgot to mention this at the top of the show. All these results, if you follow on social media, uh, particularly uh, on Facebook, uh, you either follow me or follow the show, but we'll also probably put them on Twitter. Uh, you will see the newspaper clippings for all these shows, the the ads and the little write-ups and the results from all these shows so that you can look at them and follow along as we discuss them. 
So again, Christmas night, 1965, Bruiser defeating Gene Kaniski to regain the WWA title. Uh, other matches, Wilbur Snyder and Moose Cholak, Cholak excuse me, uh, captured the tag titles from the Assassins. Uh, Johnny Valentine uh, defeated Boa Brazil uh, by Duke DQ. Angelo Poffo and Sweet Daddy Long wrestled to a draw. Uh, Ray Gordon pinned Masked Hercules. And, in what they're building as a special midget event, the Jamaican Kid beat Susie Cubid. I'm not familiar with either of those guys. But, there you have it. 1965 uh, Christmas Night. Let's move on to 1966. The show was held on December 28th. Uh, in the results, uh, the main event, Bruiser and Crusher defeated uh, nope, I'm sorry. Bruiser and Crusher wrestled to a no decision with Angelo Puffo and Chris Markoff, the Devil's Duo there. Uh, other matches. Wilbur Snyder and Mitsuya Arakawa uh, was a no decision. Joe Lanza defeated Moose Cholak. Uh, Igor Volkov and Mario Milan wrestled to a draw. There's lots of draws on this show here. Uh, Joe Tommaso defeated Lynn Rossi. Uh, Darlene Dagmer and Betty Bouchette defeated Diamond Lily and Tony Rose. And then this is the follow-up show, just for a note. It was on January 21st there at the Coliseum, following the follow-up Coliseum show. So that was 1966 uh, Christmas show held on December 28th. Uh, then we get to December 27th, 1967, also held at the Fairgrounds Coliseum. Uh, main event, Wilbur Snyder lost the WWA title to Black Jack Lanza. And also Mitsuyo Arakawa and Dr. Boto. Uh, lost the tag titles to Bruiser and Crusher. Um, excuse me, other matches. Paul Christie pinned Dennis Dolly. Assassin number two pinned Doug Gilbert. Lord Littlebrook pinned Mighty Adam. And Yukon Moose Cholak defeated Johnny Powers. Uh, so there you have it. 1967. Uh, Snyder Lanza would have been a great, great, great match. Uh, Lanza starting to his uh, run there as champion. Uh, defeating Wilbur Snyder for the title. Okay, in 1968, the show was held on December 27th at the Coliseum State Fairgrounds. Now, the main event was billed as Black Jack Lanza defeating the title against Edward Carpenter. Carpenter, I always have so much trouble defeating his, excuse me, <laughs> pronouncing his name. Anyway, he didn't show, right? He was not at this show. I'm not sure the details there. Uh, but the crowd did not go... Uh, go home uh, empty-handed as Dick the Bruiser substituted, and he defeated Lanza in a non-title match. Uh, so instead, they had to see Bruiser, uh, as the newspaper said, Bruiser whipped Lanza two out of three falls. Uh, other matches, the Chain Gang defeated uh, Bruiser and Yukon Moose Cholak uh, two out of three falls. Louis Martinez defeated Chris Markoff. Angelo Poffo and Paul Christie well wrestled to a draw. Excuse me. Prince Poland defeated Ken Russett and Johnny Ace. Case, Johnny Case and the Assassin Ritz draw, not Johnny Ace, uh, not John Laurinaitis. Uh, not happening there. So that was 1968. And then in 1969, the show was held on December the 28th uh, at the Coliseum State Fairgrounds. Uh, and in the main event, one of the, a match that I would absolutely have, have loved to have seen. Uh, the Chain Gang uh, defeated the Fabulous Kangaroos. Uh, to defend the tag titles. Uh, unbelievable there. I, I'm a huge fan, huge fan of tag team wrestling. I would have loved to have seen that match. Again, the Chain Gang defeating the Fabulous Kangaroos to retain the tag titles. Uh, Bobo Brazil was disqualified in his match with Baron Von Roschke. Uh, Wilbur Snyder and the Sheik wrestled to a draw when both were counted out. Uh, Paul Christie pinned Joe Tommaso. Angelo Poffo uh, pinned Jay Vallon. And Apache, Apache Chief Louie <laughs> defeated Bobby Heenan. Uh, pretty boy Bobby Heenan, right? That's that's who we're talking there. What a show that would have been. Uh, the Kangaroos, the Chain Gang, Snyder, Sheik, Bobo, the Baron, uh, Bobby Heenan, Angelo Pablo. I mean, that is a stacked, stacked card there in 1969. I would have loved to have seen that show. 1970, the Christmas special, as it is billed, was held on December 26th. At the Coliseum Fairgrounds. Uh, and in the main event, Wilbur Snyder and Moose Cholak defeated the uh, Fabulous Kangaroos to win the world tag titles. Uh, and in the second top event, Baron Von Raschke beat Bobo Brazil uh, to defend the uh, WWA title. Uh, other matches. Uh, it says Igor Vodic 
defeated Mitsu Arakawa. Dr. Bill Miller defeated Louis Martinez. Ivan Kalmikov defeated Bull Ramos. And Jackie Dillinger and Paul Christie wrestled to a draw. Um, oh, Igor Vankov. Okay. You got a little confused there. I was reading the results. That's, that's the mighty Igor there, right? Mighty Igor uh, defeated Mitsu. You're not used to seeing the last name thrown in there. But, uh, yeah, there you have it. It's the mighty Igor. Uh and it's 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 kind of ironic because in the uh the leading up to the show in all the promotional materials, um it's listed as um excuse me, Jackie Fargo, right? Of course Jackie Fargo, uh, the famous Memphis wrestler. Uh and the results it's listed as Jack Dillinger or Jackie Dillinger. But Jackie Dillinger uh also wrestled as Don Fargo. So I'm not sure where in all this mix, because even the ad and everything, it's listed as Jackie Fargo versus Paul Christie. And in the results, it's listed as Jackie Dillinger and Paul Christie. So, uh, and again, Jackie Dillinger was Don Fargo. So I'm not sure where the communications uh, were confused on that, on the name mix-ups. But I'm pretty sure it was Jack Dillinger or Don Fargo in that show, and not Jackie Fargo. But And then in 1979, uh, 71, excuse me, 1979, 71. Excuse me, on December 29th at the Coliseum uh, in the uh, main event uh, for the tag titles. Excuse me, Black Jack Lanza and Black Jack Mulligan defeated Wilbur Snyder and Sailor Art Thomas uh, to retain their titles. Uh, Yukon Moose Jolak defeated Baron Von Raschke in uh, what was billed as a lumberjack match. So I'm not sure the results are not does not do not denote that. Uh, but it does say in the in the ad leading up that it was a lumberjack match, uh, and then Bill and Stan Miller defeated Joe Fur and Paul Christie. Uh, Jim Dillinger and the Professor wrestled to a draw. Uh, Jack Man and Jim Grabmeyer wrestled to a draw, and Vernon or excuse me, in the results it says Vernon Larue, but it actually should be Venus Larue uh, defeated Mary Jane Mole uh, again. I, it always makes you wonder when you see these old results where the communication broke down and the type was, is that sent or called in from the office that way uh, when these are happening or, or how is that? But uh, <laughs> lots of name mistakes or, or you know, or is it in, at the newspaper side? Uh, and then 1972 on uh, held on Tuesday, December 26th, the Christmas special uh, in the main event, the Crusher and Baron Rashke wrestled to a draw uh, for the title, Baron's title. Uh, so Baron retained the title. Uh, the Blackjacks, Lanza and Mulligan, defeated Wilbur Snyder and Cowboy Bob Ellis uh, to defend the tag titles. Ernie Ladd defeated Gilbert Guerrero. The Mongolian Stomper defeated Frankie Adonis. Mitsu Arakawa and Higo Hamaguchi defeated Red Cloud and Bold Eagle. Johnny Case defeated Prince Pullins. Uh, Jimmy Valiant defeated Tom Lynch. And then get this, in a special attraction, the wrestling bear, Terrible Ted, defeated pretty boy Bobby Heenan. Now, this was such a big deal, right? Uh, such a big draw. They had the main ad uh, where it was listing it out, but they did run a ad for the show just pretty much promoting the bear versus Heenan with Bobby's picture in there. Uh, that would have been a great match, knowing uh, the way Heenan worked and the way he bumped and the way he sold things and his, how he expressed things. To see him wrestle the Bear Terrible Ted uh, would have been pretty incredible to see. So that gets us up through 1972. So let's take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll pick it back up with 1973. 73, excuse me, so stick around. On the 12 days of Christmas, the Midwest gave to me Jerry Graham Jr., Baron Von Raschke, Wilbur Snyder, Yukon Moose, Cholak, Cowboy Bob Bells, Valiant Brothers, Pretty Boy Heat, and Bo, Bo Brazil, The Great Wojo, Ox Baker, The Black Jacks, and a Bruiser in the Wrestling Ring. All right, and welcome back. Here we go. Let's jump right back into it with 1973 uh, WWA Indianapolis Christmas show held on December 26th. Now, this is a pretty, uh, it, it, the cards build a Christmas spectacular, and it truly is spectacular. It uh, is billed in the ad leading up as it's the biggest 
two rings side by side, two battle royals at the same time, 24 wrestlers, $20,000 in prizes. How about that? Two 12-man battle royals. Uh, they had $10,000 going to each winner. This was a big, big show. Uh, and the winner of winners, excuse me, of those two battle royals were Pepper Gomez and Bruno San Martino. That's right. We're in the uh, stretch where Bruno was working uh, for Bruiser in the WWE. And him and Pepper Gomez win the two battle royals uh, at the Expo Center uh, on December 26, 1973. Uh, the other matches that were on the show, Wilbur Snyder defeated Cowboy Parker. Uh, Billy Red Cloud defeated Baron Von Roschke. Jim Valiant uh, defeated The Professor. Uh, Pepper Gomez and Ernie Ladd wrestled to a draw. Uh, Pretty Boy Bobby Heenan defeated Louis Martinez. Cowboy Bob Ellis defeated Ken Dillinger. Bruno San Martino defeated John Valiant. And Yukon Moose Cholak whipped Mitsu Arakara. Uh, so that's 1973. How cool would it have been to have seen those two battle royals? See Bruno in Indianapolis. Uh, would have been a very, very cool show. That's a big show. Uh, lots going on there. 1974, the show was held at the Expo Center on December 26th. Uh, in the main event, the Sheik defeated Cowboy Bob Ellis. Uh, the Sheik making an appearance in Indianapolis. Uh, and the tag team of Mike Snyder and Paul Christie defeated Kim Duck and Mark Manson. Now, that would have been a very interesting match because, let me tell you, uh, I know I am biased to Midwest Wrestling. But Mike Snyder and Mark Manson are two of the most underrated talents. Uh, in professional wrestling history, in my mind. Both of them uh, athletic, both of them good workers. Mark Manson was a bump machine. Uh, the man was unbelievable, uh, known for his work with the graduates. Uh, but he, dude, could work, right? Because that would have been a great match. I would like to have seen, especially the interactions with Snyder and Manson in that match. No disrespect meant to the other two men. But I would have loved to have seen that. Uh, other matches on the show... Uh, Bobo Brazil defeated Ox Baker by DQ. John Fargo and Jacques Goulet defeated Pepper Gomez and Wilbur Snyder. Eddie Creechman was disqualified in an arm wrestling match with Sam Meneker. Of course he was, right? Has there ever been an arm wrestling match on a wrestling show that did not end in some dubious fashion with a DQ? I, probably not. Uh, you know what you're going to get when you go into it. <laughs> uh, Bobby Bold Eagle defeated Mark Manson. Bill Miller defeated Clem Turner. And the Mighty Igor defeated Ricky Hamilton. Uh, so a very good show there in my eyes. Uh, the Sheik and Bob Ellis would have been a great, great main event uh, to see on that show. 1979, uh, the show, excuse me, was held on December 26th at the Expo Center. Uh, and in the main event, Dick the Bruiser and the Crusher uh, teamed up and beat the Legionnaires uh, in a cage match uh, in front of 7,000 fans, it's reported. Uh, would have been a great, great main event. Bruiser, Crusher, the Legionnaires in a cage. Uh, that alone would have put the people in the door. Uh, in other matches, Pepper Gomez defeated uh, Ox Baker to retain the WWA title. And on the undercard, Moose Cholak defeated Ferdinand Pantera. Spike Huber defeated Ken Dillinger. Uh, Wilbur Snyder wrestled to a draw with the Strangler. Chuck O'Connor defeated Duke George. And Chief Bold Eagle defeated Rodeo Jones. Uh, Chuck O'Connor, an interesting name there. Uh, a lot of you might not be familiar with uh, the name Chuck O'Connor, but you would be familiar with one of his later incarnations as Chuck O'Connor would later be Big John Studd uh, getting his start there in Indianapolis and wrestling on that show. 1976 the show was held on December 27th at the Expo Center uh, in the main event. The Sheik and Eddie Creechman defeated Dick the Bruiser and Sam Miniker. Uh What a match that would have been. Anytime you get Sheik and Bruiser involved in a match uh, it would have uh, you know, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be something, right? It's going to be violent. It's going to be uh, aggressive. It's going to be hard hitting. Other matchers, uh, oh, <laughs> matchers. What does that <laughs> even mean? Uh, the Strangler defeated uh, Ox Baker by disqualification uh, to defend the WWA title. Uh, the Bounty Hunters and Wilbur Snyder and Bobo Brazil wrestled to a double disqualification. Uh, Steve Regal defeated Luke Klein. That right there, right? I'm telling you, that would have been a great match there. Steve Regal, the future Mr. Electricity, uh, former, or excuse me, future at this point, uh, one half of the AWA tag titles, uh, champions, wrestling Luke Klein, who's another underrated talent, uh, beyond belief there. Steve Regal, Luke Klein would have been a great match. Uh, Paul Christie defeated Rick Hamilton. Uh, Bill Shirk, who was from WXLW, a local radio station, uh, he wrestled, and he was in a straight jacket, 
teaming with Spike Huber, and they defeated uh, <laughs> uh, Handsome Johnny Star and Cashbox Kent, who was in handcuffs. So there you have it. There, there's that's wrestling for you right there. You have a radio DJ in a straight jacket teaming with Spike Huber to defeat uh, Cashbox Kent, a manager uh, here in handcuffs, and Handsome Johnny Star. And then also Moose Cholock defeated Ken Dillinger, Bold Eagle, Bobby Bold Eagle defeated Buck Robley. Uh, what a wacky card that is. Uh, then 1977 at the Expo Center in Indianapolis uh, on December 26th, the Christmas Spectacular. Uh, this main event right here would have been one I would have loved to have seen as well. I know I say that a lot, but uh, they're billing it in the ads leading up as USA versus Russia, a cage match. And ten thousand dollars on the line, no disqualification. Anything goes, and they are specifically billing it in these ads that this match will not be seen on TV. Right? You got to come in person to see this match, uh, 1977. Um, and what you had is Dick the Bruiser defeating Ivan Koloff to win the WWA title. Uh, they're reporting 9,300 people in the Expo Center to watch this show. Uh, that is amazing. Uh, that that match. I mean, Bruiser and Koloff in a cage for the title spectacular uh and then in the other matches you got the valiant brothers uh, successfully defending the tag titles against wilbur snyder and dominique danucci the sheik and moose Jolak battle to a draw spike huber and steve regal the young lions there defeating don kent and killer verdo uh, in a tag match and mike snyder defeated ken dillinger and the big Wiz defeated ivan volkoff uh, big Wiz later to be the hooded hangman for the wwa and wrestling in the main events uh, of his own uh, rob westman uh, who we had on the show Rest in peace, Rob. Uh, there he is. So that's 1977. That is a uh, amazing, amazing show there that they're giving you. December 26, 1978 uh, was the next year's Christmas show held at the Expo Center. Uh, they are billing this as a triple main event. So here we go. Okay, let's get through this here. The triple main event. <laughs> we have a Texas death match. Uh, Madman Mitchell, that is Guy Mitchell, defeating Dick the Bruiser. Uh, and you may not recognize the name Guy Mitchell. Uh, he would later become Gentleman Jerry Valiant, uh, wrestling with the Valiant brothers. Uh, Jim and John would go to WWF uh, and win the tag titles with them. Uh, but here he is wrestling as Guy Mitchell in one of his uh, incarnations. Uh, he would come back and work for WWE a lot uh, with the Gentleman Jerry Valiant gimmick. Uh, but here he is, Guy Mitchell, defeating Dick the Bruiser in a Texas death match. Other matches on this show, we have Wilbur Snyder defeated John Valiant uh, in a match that was originally billed leading up to it as a, the Sheik versus Wilbur Snyder for the U.S. title. Uh, Sheik was not on this show for whatever reason. Ended up being Wilbur Snyder defeating John Valiant. Bobo Brazil defeated uh, Roger Kirby. Moose Cholak defeated uh, Leo Seitz. Bobby Bold Eagle defeated the Black Saint. Big Wiz defeated Jim Grabmeyer. And then Pretty Boy Bobby Heaton and Paul Christie uh, defeated Spike Huber and Pepper Gomez. It's funny because in these results, the Paul Christie, it's it, they're spelling Christie, C-H-E-R-I-S-T-I-E. -E. Don't know what that is. Uh, completely butchering the name there. But it is indeed Paul Christie. <laughs> uh, 1979 uh, at the Expo Center, the show was held on December 26th. And in the results, and what is billed as a sissy flag tag team match that will not be seen on TV, by the way. Dick the Bruiser and Spike Huber defeated Pretty Boy Bobby Heenan and Paul Christie. Uh, these are the kind of things that were formerly called a, a Gestapo death match, I believe is what they called it, uh, that uh, Bruiser would wrestle Baron Von Raschke. They kind of changed the name. Now it's a sissy flag match. Uh, basically, they are uh, seconded. The teams are seconded by someone. Bruiser and Huber had Sam Miniker. Uh, Heenan and Christie had uh, Tiny Hampton. Uh, in there or Reverend Hampton uh, in their corner and waving the flag. So that's what it is. Uh, Bruiser and Huber defeated Heenan and Christie. Uh, Moose Jolak defeated King Kong Brody. Reverend Hampton defeated Dust Savage. Boba Brazil wrestled to a draw with Dr. Jerry Graham Jr., friend of the show, uh, who is also the host of Graham's Gallery here that you hear uh, on this show. Uh, the Cuban Assassin defeated Greg Lake. Greg Lake, another friend of the show who we've had on in the past, uh, would later be known as the Patriot in WWA. Uh, Wilbur Snyder defeated Ox Baker. Miss Bunny Love defeated Alice Cooper. No, not the rock and roll Alice Cooper. This is the female wrestler Alice Cooper. And El Bracero, another friend of the show who we've had on in the past, defeated the Black Saint. Uh, so you can kind of see the lineup, the roster here, shifting as we go approach the 80s. Uh, you see a lot of familiar names that were in uh, Indianapolis at that time. 
uh, starting to make their marks. And then, so let's hit the 80s. In 1980, on December 25th, Christmas night, the Christmas Spectacular at the Expo Center. Uh, in the main event, Dick the Bruiser defeated Baron Moreschke. Uh, Spike Huber and Wilbur Snyder defeated Dr. Jerry Graham Jr. and Don Kent. One of my favorite tag teams of all kind. I know, at all time, excuse me. I know I talk about underrated talents on this. I've, I've, I've mentioned a lot here tonight, or on this episode. Uh, Dr. Jerry Graham Jr. and Don Kent were a great, great tag team. I love them. So, uh, But they took the loss here on this night. Uh, Chief Bold Eagle uh, defeated Mark Manson. Uh, Sheik Ali Hassan defeated Yukon Moose Cholak. Uh, Bobo Brazil defeated Reverend Hampton and Paul Christie in a handicap match. So that was the 1980 show, and we only got one more, 1981. And this time it's held at Market Square Arena, uh, which just opened up in 1974 there in Indianapolis. Uh, and on this night, uh, December 27th, 1981, they're holding the Christmas show there. Uh, in the main event, the Bruiser, Dick the Bruiser and Spike Huber, Wrestled to a one-hour draw with the Kelly Twins. Uh, how remarkable is that? A one-hour draw involving Bruiser, Spike Huber, and the Kelly Twins. Uh, other matches. Moose Jolock defeated Roger Kirby. Wilbur Snyder defeated Jerry Valiant. There he is. Gentleman Jerry Valiant. Valiant as we spoke earlier. Guy Mitchell. Uh, here he is back. Bobo Brazil defeated the Hooded Hangman, which formerly the Big Wiz. We talked about him earlier, right? Here he is again. He's now the Hooded Hangman. Uh, Rufus R. Jones defeated Paul Christie. And uh, the great Wojo uh, wrestled to a draw with Steve Regal. So there you're seeing... Uh, Wojo starting to make his mark here, who would obviously be a major, major player uh, in the WWA. Uh, another unbelievably underrated talent uh, in professional wrestling. And there you have it. That's all the Christmas shows. Like I said, there might have been other quote-unquote Christmas shows around that time in the future. Uh, there is supposedly one from 1982 that was held in Hammond. There are no results. Not any information being found. So this is what we have documented. That's where we stopped, 1981. <laughs> Merry Christmas.